Hello my friends, in today's video we will take a look at Sony FE70 to 200mm f4 GOSS telephoto lens for Sony E-mount. 70 to 200mm f4 is in my opinion an underrated type of lens. People often overlook them because of f2.8 versions, but I think that the f4 can offer a lot of performance and it is sufficient or even a better choice for some users, including myself. In this video we will take a look at the performance and the feature set of 70-200G in combination with a7 III and a7C. I will explain why I bought it instead of Tamron 70-180mm f2.8 and I will try to help you decide whether you should also get one. 70-200mm is a classic short to medium telephoto range. It is suitable for a wide variety of genres, such as portraits, journalism or sport. I mostly use 70-200 for landscapes, cities, architecture and travel photography in general. Besides the longer reach, it also provides a different perspective than 24-70 and additional creative options. That means that using 70-200 is also an easy way to somewhat differentiate your stills and video. This lens is 17.5 cm long and it weighs 840 grams. That is pretty small and light for this type of lens. The build quality is very good. It is mostly made out of high quality plastics combined with metal parts. It generally feels like a high quality premium product, so I have no complaints there. This lens is weather sealed, but there is no gasket around the mount, which is a bit of shame. On the other hand, it is an internal zoom lens, which means that it won't pump the dust inside. Because of that, I am pretty confident about using this lens in reasonably bad weather. As you can see, it is white to reflect the heat and prevent expansion of certain parts. I generally like white lenses because they just look professional. Mounted on Sony a7 III, it is well balanced. The grip on a7 III is sufficient and there is just enough space between the grip and the lens. I haven't noticed any discomfort even when I was using it on a7C, which is the smallest E-mount full frame. That is of course achieved mainly by the f4 aperture. That is a compromise between the light gathering and the size. As I have mentioned, I use it mainly for travel photography, which is why I prefer white saving over f2.8 aperture. You can still get a lot of background blur with f4 and the ISO performance on a7 cameras is great, so I don't really need f2.8 for my intended use. Regarding the controls, well it has all of them. The zoom ring is extremely smooth with completely even resistance. It is a great zooming ring. This is generally a strength of internal zoom lenses. This lens uses focus by wire system of course. The focusing ring is also very smooth and it has reasonable amount of resistance. Unfortunately, it is speed sensitive, but it is still usable. Regarding the switches, we have the autofocus manual focus switch, accompanied by focus limiter. If you set it to 3 meters to infinity, it will be slightly faster. There is also a switch that turns the stabilization on and off and the mode switch. Mode 1 is for normal use and mode 2 is for panning. Last but not least, we have three custom buttons. All three buttons always do the same thing, which can be set in the camera menu. 70-200 f4 also comes with a tripod collar, which can be rotated for portrait mode or just removed. As you can see, I use it with Peak Design standard plate, which gives me four anchor points and it allows me to mount the camera to ARCA compatible mount in both directions. Pretty large sun hood is included as well. This one is very high quality and it is lined with anti-reflective material on the inside. Regarding the optical qualities, I have tested this lens with 24 megapixel sensor in Sony a7 III. As I've explained many times, this sensor has relatively low pixel density, which means that it is not very demanding when it comes to optical quality. At 70mm the sharpness is already fantastic at f4 in the center of the frame. 
there is the tiniest improvement in sharpness at f5.6. The contrast is noticeably better though. The central sharpness at f8 is the same, so basically perfect. There is a slight decrease in sharpness at f11, but the diffraction is hardly visible. The corner sharpness at f4 is very good, but the contrast is a bit weaker and there is some chromatic aberration. The contrast and the sharpness at f5.6 is excellent. f8 looks basically the same, so great sharpness and contrast, but there is a bit of chromatic aberration. f11 still looks great, since there is basically no visible diffraction. It is basically the same story at 135mm. The central sharpness is excellent right from f4, with a tiny improvement of contrast at f5.6. f8 looks the same, so basically perfect, and so does the f11, because there is no diffraction at all at f11. The corner sharpness at f4 is a bit softer. It significantly increases at f5.6, and there is a tiny improvement at f8, where the sharpness is perfect. At f11 we can see a decrease of contrast, but the sharpness is still great. Finally at 200mm the central sharpness is again excellent right from f4 and the contrast is also great. There is just a bit of chromatic aberration, which almost disappears at f5.6. f8 looks again the same and so does f11. The corner sharpness at f4 is still pretty solid, but the contrast is quite weak. A5.6 brings much better contrast and a little bit better sharpness. F8 is very similar to F5.6, but we can see a lot of diffraction at F11. So as you can see, the sharpness is excellent overall. With 24 megapixel sensor, you can basically use this lens anywhere from F4 to F11 throughout the whole zoom range, and you will always get very good sharpness. If you want the maximal sharpness at contrast, use f5.6 and f8. There is a pincushion distortion at 70mm, which changes to barrel distortion around 100mm, but it is easy to correct in camera or in editing, and it doesn't have a significant effect on image quality. Overall, I am very happy with the optical qualities of 70-200G. The optical character is generally very nice. Micro contrast is very high and the color reproduction is very neutral. I can say that the real world stills and video generally look very nice as expected. Rendition of bokeh is a pleasant surprise for me. It is very smooth with nice gradual transitions. It has 9 aperture blades which seems to be enough. Maximal magnification is 0.13 times which is average for this type of lens. That is enough for shooting cameras or even flowers, but not enough for wristwatches. Regarding the autofocus, as expected, it is very fast and 100% accurate. The tracking also works great. In video it works very well even in the low light. The transitions are very smooth and it won't hesitate at all. The speed and responsiveness mostly depend on in-camera settings. The autofocus is completely silent of course. Overall, I have no complaints about the autofocus in video. Regarding the reason why I bought this lens over Tamron 70-180, to that is the optical image stabilization. Sony a7 III and other cameras that I will be using with this lens have sensor stabilization. The problem is that the effect of any in-body image stabilization decreases at longer focal lengths. Dual stabilization makes a huge difference above 70mm as you can see. I use 70 to 200 for handheld B-roll video a lot, which is the reason why no OIS on this type of lens is a deal breaker for me. The dual stabilization with this lens and a7 III is generally very good. Handheld static shots are presentable even at 200mm. Regarding the shutter speeds, at 70mm I was easily able to use 1 15th of the second, and even 1 tenth is possible. One disadvantage of this lens is that it is not compatible with any teleconverters. Regarding the price, as always, it depends on the region. 
It is about $1000 cheaper than f2.8, which is quite a significant saving. This lens has been on the market for a while, which means that you can sometimes find a good deal. The current price will be linked in the description. To sum up, the first thing that I will say is that I generally recommend 70 to 200 mm lens or its equivalent basically for every serious photographer. As I've explained, it is a very versatile and useful focal length. Regarding Sony FE 70 to 200 mm f4 G OSS, I can say that I am very happy with this lens. It is relatively small, well built, it has internal zoom and full controls. The optical qualities are very good. F4 is sufficient for intended purposes and I enjoy highly effective dual stabilization. It is not quite perfect though. It is weather sealed to some degree, but there is no gasket around the mount. The minimum focus distance also isn't as good as with the latest lenses of the same type. It is also a bit unfortunate that it is not possible to use it with a teleconverter. Despite that, I think that it is still the best short to mid telephoto e-mount lens for traveling and it generally performs very well, which means that I can recommend it. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful, stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content, I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down, if you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do some in the comment section and see you next time.